Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Update with me, David Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. And today's date is Monday the 29th of January and the time has just gone 12.15pm UK time. And the quick rundown of the Monday Market Update is I'll cover the major economic events that are in the, the calendar for the next, five trading, next few trading sessions. And then after that, I'll take a quick look at some of the major markets and look at some of the potential levels that, we could, that, that, could, be, that could be important in the next few trading sessions. Now, so the first thing we're going to do now is take a quick look at the economic, uh, indic the economic calendar. And for those of you who are familiar with our trading platform, you know that it can be found under this tab here under Market Pulse. Fourth option down gives you the market calendar gives you a breakdown of the figures that that that, uh, that were that were released on uh, that were, as the number of economic indicators come out it shows you the figure here in the actual in the actual column when the numbers are, are, are revealed it, sh it, that, it gives you a comparison of what the forecast was uh, for, from from from, uh, from economists and also from uh, from analysts and also shows you the, the prior figure as well so looking ahead to tomorrow uh, Tuesday the 30th of January Take a quick look at the economic calendar. What's to watch out for tomorrow morning? We got French, we got French GDP. We have Spanish GDP at, at eight in the morning. Uh, at half nine UK time, we have consumer credit numbers coming out from the from the UK economy. Ten o'clock uh, tomorrow morning, we have the eurozone uh, consumer confidence. And the big one to watch out for tomorrow is, of course, going to be German CPI. Germany has, has been producing some very strong economic indicators, but the, but the inflation rate in Germany has been steadyish um, and that is, that, that is an area for concern for the European Cent European Central Bank President Mario Draghi and we will we, we also be looking at your Euro Eurozone CPI later on this week as well. Fast forwarding on to, to 3 o'clock tomorrow we have US Consumer Confidence uh, the, 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 the Consumer the Confidence Board numbers are coming out tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Turning our attention now to Wednesday uh, we have the CPI figures out from Australia and the early hours of Wednesday morning Scrolling down through the trading session, we have manufacturing numbers coming out of China. So anybody trading the Australian dollar, high-grade copper, or any of the mining companies needs to be keeping an eye on those sets of figures. Uh, later on, 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 the, on Wednesday morning, we have uh, updates from Germany in terms of unemployment. Uh, that's obviously going to, be, going to be a big one to watch out for. And the, probably the biggest one on Tuesday is going to be the Eurozone CPI. Uh, and we're expecting Eurozone CPI to dip from 1.4% to 1.3%. Now this is a is a significant figure because the president of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, uh, already has quite a loose monetary policy in place. But he stipulated on several occasions that he's willing to either expand the, the current program or extend it uh, should he should he feel is required. And one of the areas that he that, that one of the areas that he, he feels that there is weakness in the eurozone economy is inflation. And if inflation tends to step back, we could see we could be trader, traders may view that as an indication that the, that the loose monetary policy of the ECB is here to stay. Um, and that being what, what we could see in the back of that is potentially a weaker euro, and the flip side of that, potentially stronger eurozone equities such as the DAX and the CAC 40 in, Fran in, in France. Later on Wednesday, we have uh, Canadian uh, uh, Canadian growth figures, Canadian GDP come out at half one on Wednesday morning. So Wednesday uh, lunchtime UK time. Uh, later on on Wednesday at half three, as to do every week, we have the U.S. oil inventory figures. On Thursday, the big numbers to watch out for are going to be manufacturing figures from from, from, from China. This is the Kaishin survey, the, the private survey uh, from China, that will be out at the early hours of Tuesday morning. We have house price figures coming out of, of the U.K. Uh, at 7 a.m. on Thursday, the 1st of February. Uh, er, looking ahead to Thursday, the bulk of Thursday is going to be taken up with the PMI manufacturing figures uh, from Italy, from France, from Germany, from Eurozone as a whole, from the uh, from the United Kingdom. We also have manufacturing figures coming out from, from Canada as well. And as we do every single Thursday, we have jobless claims figures coming out of the United States. And clicking ahead to Friday, Friday the 2nd of February, the first Friday of the month, so you know what that means, that is non-farm payroll. That's going to be by far the biggest economic uh, announcement of the week and of, and of Friday. Taking a look now at the indicator here, we're expecting 180,000 jobs to have, been, to have been added. That compares with 148 in the previous month. Unemployment is, is, is tipped to hold steady at 4.1%. Uh, 
uh, earnings on a yearly basis are expected to grow by 2.6%. That will be improvement on the previous reading of 25 And on a month-on-month -month basis, average earnings are tipped to remain uh, at the same growth rate of 0.3%. Um, this is going to be the, the most important economic indicator of the uh, of the week. And when, when it comes to non-farm payrolls, the devil is in the detail. And a lot of the time, the market will move. So the knee-jerk reaction, the initial reaction to the non-farm payrolls report will be this figure here. Will it be higher or lower than the 180,000? But, but the key for non-farm payrolls is that my view is that the entire report should be taken as a whole. So you've got the headline figure, which tends to kind of be the kind of first one out, the, out of the gate that everyone looks at, and that can skew the dollar or it can skew the Dow futures. But then traders uh, realize that there, there may or may not be revisions to the previous month's number or the previous two months' number. So that 148 may be revised higher, it may be revised lower. We could also see a change in unemployment, or we could see better or worse than expected figures in terms of the actual earnings. And it's not, it's, 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 it's happened uh, probably on, on too many occasions whereby they say the headline figure was quite positive. So it, it was quite positive for the US dollar, maybe sent US equities lower. And then the remainder of the port is quite negative. We could see downward revisions to the previous month's numbers. We could see increased student employment and we could see the lower than expected growth rate from the earnings. And then well, it's not uncommon to see the market moving in the opposite direction. So if you're looking at non-farm payrolls and you're going to trade it, my view is that you, you need to look at the report as a whole and make an informed ju judge, judgment across the entire set of data that is released at half one UK time on Friday. Uh, I'll take a look now at a few of the major markets. Uh, we'll start off here with, with the FTSE 100 and look at some potential levels that, we, that could be important throughout the week. So the first thing you notice that we saw here, um, basically about two weeks ago, exactly two weeks ago, we saw the FTSE hit a fresh record high. So the first indication that recently the in, the, the, the move you know, in, in the kind of medium term has been positive. There's been a solid upward trend here from December to the middle of, to middle of January. Trading an all-time high, and we have seen the market pull back ever so slightly. We have seen the market pull back since then. So I would suggest the upper trend that the market has been in is still in place. And this this, this retreat here from in around 7,800 south down towards 7,600, uh, it, it appears here to be actually kind of correcting itself yet again. So we could look for another move higher to the upside. Notice how as the market was selling off here, we saw a distinct increase in negative momentum. And now we're seeing negative momentum actually fall slightly. So the sellers are, the sellers and the bears are kind of running out of pressure, running out of momentum. And we're seeing the market push higher here. So this could be the beginning of the next leg higher where the market looks to retake 7,800 and then potentially go beyond that up to, say, 7,900 or even, even as high as 8,000. Turning our attention now to what's going on over in Germany uh, with the DAX. The DAX similar, similar, uh, not similar, not similar-ish. Uh, we, we saw the market has broadly speaking been moving higher over the past month, but uh, we traded a fresh all-time high here only last Thursday, or sorry, last Tuesday rather. But the market has come off uh, ever, ever since then. And notice how as the market was pushing lower, we saw a cooling in the positive momentum. So the, the buyers were, were running out of steam. But now we're seeing the market kind of edge up again. So this could be potentially the, uh, the, the, uh, the next leg higher on the, on the DAX. And should we look to kind of push on higher from here, we could be looking at heading, heading towards, back towards 13,600. And if we take out 13,600, 13, nice big psychological number to watch out for would be 13,700. Moves lower in the DAX may find some support in around this price action here of 13,400. We did see a bit of... A bit of Quite a bit of price action and consolidation in around here and uh, on a few occasions it did manage to act as resistance so old resistance may now come potentially comes turn to support take a look now at what's going on over the, the u.s markets the dow jones um and the other american indices are in are in a are still rolling in, in, in terms of book at a in terms of their bull market moves classic example of an of an upward trend higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows to the point where even the pullbacks in the dow jones aren't even actually that deep or even or even that or even or even last for that long so depends on how depends how you want to how how um how you want to play this do you want to wait for see a pullback of 50 or 100 points and then get, get into the market or do you want to buy the market potentially you know this area and hope that we don't see any kind of short-term corrections but 
what we've seen on the Dow Jones for the last several months is a classic example of a solid upward trend. So the, 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 the bullish momentum is still very much there. Buying on the dip has been a popular strategy for the last number of months. But the, 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 there has been uh, consistent talk of the market being overstretched. That being said, we have no from, from, the, from a charting point of view, we've seen no signs that the market uh, is about to, 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 to give up or to have a major correction in the near term at least. So looking higher here, if, if we kind of continue on pushing up these levels, we could be looking at targeting 26,600 or 26,700 and so on. Move to the downside. If we do see any 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 pullbacks, any sell-offs in the Dow, we could potentially may find support, some support in around this price area here of 26,457, or perhaps even down down toward this price area here of 26,300. Take a look now at what's going on in the gold market. Gold has obviously had a, had a decent run recently, given we, we had some sell-off. We had a bit of severe sell-off in the US dollar and gold here hit its highest level since August 2016 uh, only on last Thursday and we have seen a bit of a correction a bit of a pullback since then so the, the, the market is clearly in an upward trend gold's been doing very well over the past say six or seven weeks since the middle of since the middle of December we have seen a bit of a retracement here but areas you can potentially find some support in gold may come into play in around the 1340 region or perhaps even down as low as 1326 but the wider trend over the past six or seven weeks to the upside is still is still intact. If you take out the recent high, which was created last Thursday of 1366, the next big level to watch out for will be 1375. 1375 hasn't been seen on gold since July 2016. And if you go north of that, then the, the next big kind of psychological number to keep an eye out for will, of course, be 1400. I'll take a look at now a couple of currency pairs before we wrap this up. As I mentioned, we have a few economic indicators coming out from the Eurozone and also from the, the, the UK this week. Not, not to mention the, uh, the non-farm not, 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 not to mention non-farm payrolls at the back of the week. This year is a chart for Euro dollar and it's been in a consistent upward trend for, for many months now. Uh, we've hit in, uh, fresh multi-year highs only last week, largely driven by the weak US dollar. But as I said, we have Euro Eurozone CPI numbers out this week and growth figures from some Eurozone countries that, that will be of, of, uh, that could add volatility to the market. So the market is in very much an upward trend. Moving north of here, we could be looking, if you continue this positive move, we could be looking at targeting 126, 127 uh, potentially this week. Uh, move to the downside. If you see any pullbacks in the price of, in, in the euro dollar, we may find some support in around this price action here. Uh, the, the, the lows of Tuesday in around 123.81 or perhaps even down as low as 123, the figure itself, or even 122. It's in such a, a solid upper trend. It's a sort of market that we could see buyers enter the fold if we do see pullbacks, seeing as buying on the dip has been a popular strategy on the euro versus the US dollar for the previous few months. And also, the pound has been taking full advantage of the weakness in the US dollar too. So taking a look here, if we draw a trend line from the lows of March 2017 through the lows of August 2017, we can see here that Fair enough that there was a few occasions where the, where the pound dollar did manage to kind of trade through that trend line on a number of occasions, but by and large, it's managed to stay, stay north of it uh, over the last, say, nine months or so, nine or ten months, and even the, to the point where the, the rate at which the, the pound is pushing higher against the US dollar is actually increasing. So we can see in a steady upward trend. Last Thursday, when the US dollar was particularly weak, uh, we saw the pound person, the pound register a fresh. 18 month high, 19 month high versus the US dollar, the highest level not seen since the EU referendum vote in 2016. So it's clearly in a very solid upper trend. Notice how, as the market was pushing higher here, it did manage to take out north of 143, and then, and then ever since then has managed to turn over. So it's like it's, it's, it's like the bulls were kind of. Um, we're kind of running out of steam, and now we are seeing that the market's actually a bit of profit taking has has uh, has, has kicked in, and we're seeing we're seeing starting uh, pull back pull back. As we see the the pullback here in the pound versus the US dollar, we can notice you see the positive momentum is, is declining. So the buying pressure uh, is is in decline. So we're seeing here is um, the market is so we could potentially see a further correction to this pullback. Well. 
So we could head back down towards the psychological 140 region, or perhaps even down as far as, say, 139 or 138. We did see consolidation and, 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 and a lot of trading going on in those prices. So these are all areas to potentially keep an eye out for on the downside. But as I just stated, the, the wider upper trend is still very much in place on the pound versus the US dollar. And it moves to the upside. If we, take out, if we retake 143, we can be looking to head back up towards 144, 145. These are potential areas to keep an eye out for uh, if you're trading the pound versus the US dollar this week. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much and have a good week.